Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me again here on a special edition of the Traveling in Ireland broadcast virtual visit. Today we have returned to County Clare and we are visiting with Ollie Gleason, who runs a walking tour of Ennis. Now, Ennis is a spot that a lot of people pass through. It's right there off the motorway as you travel from the Shannon Airport up toward Galway. You might take uh, one of the, the uh, big roundabout turns to get to the Cliffs of Moher, but a lot of people don't stop in Ennis. So, Ollie, I'm excited to hear why people need to stop in Ennis. Well, hello, Jody. Uh, how are you getting on? Thanks for having me on today. My name is Ollie Gleason, um, and I'm a tour guide of Ennis, and I grew up in this town. So, when I, when I first became a tour guide, I couldn't understand why people didn't stop in my town. I just couldn't get my head around it because I'd grown up in the town my whole life. I had to teach myself the history. The more I learned, the more I became absolutely fascinated about. And when I was 19, I set up my own tour business here in Ennis. Um, I'm now 24 now, so we're in business, what, four or five years now. Um, so why should you visit Ennis? In 2017, one year after we started business, um, Ireland was crowned, or sorry, I'm, I'm Ennis was crowned Ireland's friendliest town. Mm -hmm. I'm not taking credit, <laughs> but it was a year after we started business. Uh, the people are absolutely incredibly friendly here in Ennis, and we are the capital of, of Irish traditional music, okay? So every night of the week, we actually have live Irish traditional music, okay? So if you can get into Ennis and find parking, well done. Step one complete. You can find the best Irish traditional musicians in nearly every pub, every single night of the week. You don't need to book it. You don't need to reserve it. You just got to come in, grab yourself a pint of Guinness, sit back, relax, and enjoy the absolute talent that sits in front of you. Um, another thing is the history. Okay. So I'm, I'm a tour guide. I, I obviously love history. Um, but Ennis has shaped a lot of a lot of the Irish history as a whole. Okay, some very very famous figures have come or passed through Ennis. Okay, one is a man called Daniel O'Connell. Now, for anyone, for any of your audience that have ever um, been to Ireland, they've more than likely been to Dublin. You've seen a large Daniel O'Connell monument in the middle of O'Connell Street, the city or the pinpoint of the city centre. Daniel O'Connell was probably one of the most monumental figures in Irish history, okay? He was the man who liberated the Catholic Church, okay, back in the 1800s. So basically, England ruled over Ireland for a long, long period of time. And while they were here, they decided to ban Catholic religion, okay? And many people had tried to get rid of um, this... Catholic ban, okay? And they had all these different methods. You can imagine what they tried. They had the bombs, the non-peaceful protests, the guns, the threats, all this type of things. And they achieved absolutely nothing. So uh, this man called Daniel O'Connell, originally from County Kerry, came home from his time spent abroad. He came home with a deep hatred for violence. But he was a very strong religious Catholic man. And he wanted to achieve this Catholic freedom, but in a peaceful manner. Okay, to do this, Jody, he did three things, okay? He got the people behind him, he got the money, and then he went straight into politics. So, the people, he held these meetings all around Ireland, okay? Ennis, Galway, Cork, the main cities and towns of Ireland, okay? They started off quite small, okay, maybe three or four people, but as we went on, they got bigger. They got so big, they were actually nicknamed monster meetings. Okay, that was due to the sheer size of the gatherings. Okay, at one meeting, this is now at the beginning of the 1800s, Jody, there was a record attendance of 250,000 people. Okay, you can imagine how difficult it could be to hear anyone at that type of event. It was clear that people liked what Daniel stood for rather than what he was actually talking about because, believe you me, they could not hear him at all. Okay, that was step one. <laughs> complete. Step two was money. Daniel asked the people of Ireland for um, 
a thing they called Catholic rent, which was one penny a month into a little small fund. When there's nearly 8 million people paying a penny a month into your back pocket every single month, you become a very wealthy man very quickly. And just like that, step one and step two, complete. That left him with politics, which brings us back to Ennis. Okay, Daniel needed to run for an election somewhere in Ireland with the sole hope, the sole aim of being elected into the English Parliament. Now, this was a very difficult thing to do. Okay, he was a Catholic man. Catholics had never been elected into English politics ever before. He was up against one local Ennis landlord, a man called V.C. Fitzgerald. I personally like to refer to him as a greasy V.C. Um, he owned a lot of the land in Ennis, and um, he would have been the main opposition, okay? Uh, another, uh, how do I say, problem in this election is the fact that it wasn't a closed election, okay? You couldn't go into the courthouse being a big fan of your landlord and then um, secretly vote for Daniel, okay? This was actually an open election. All those who had to vote stood outside the courthouse um, in the town centre of Ennis, They'd say, hi, my name is Ali. I live on this street down here and I vote for X, Y, or Z. So as you can imagine, there was a lot of pressure on those living in V.C. Fitzgerald's land. If they did not vote for him, they'd be out. But what happened, Jody? Did Daniel O'Connell win? What do you reckon? He did, of course. The, the people got behind Daniel. Every single one of V.C. Fitzgerald's landlords voted against him, okay? They just believed in the Catholic Church way more than they just took a big risk, basically. Okay, he was nicknamed the Liberator. He got elected into the House of Commons, mm -hmm. and before he set one foot inside that um, House of Commons, the English were so kind of nervous and afraid they granted Catholic freedom like that. That very election in 1828 in Ennis, Ireland was the very reason that Catholics can roam free in Ireland, why you see hundreds, if not thousands of Catholic churches in nearly every village, town and city in Ireland. Did I just blabber on for too long there, Jodie? <laughs> and that's just one of the reasons that Ennis has really become, it's, it's almost like the, the county city of it is. Clare. It is. Uh, Ennis was a prime market town, okay? So for a long time, people um, farm, and up until recently enough even, and still even to some extent, farmers would, would wake up at all hours of the morning, okay? And they would make the long commute from Doolan, from all over the, at the county, and make their way into Ennis to trade, to buy and sell produce, sell their cows, yada, yada, yada. So Ennis was the economic center of County Clare. But when farmers tend to con, uh, when, when farmers come together in Ireland, you often see a picture. There's actually a very um, famous statue in the Ennis Town Centre. Uh, you can see it in the picture here. Um, they they were fond of a pint. <laughs> they come, and they do their deals, and 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 they go to one of the fifty-four pubs available still today in Ennis. Yes, there are 54 pubs, would you believe, okay? You can go to one a week, every week, and two at Christmas time, okay? Um, so Ennis went very quickly from being known as the economic centre of County Clare to becoming the social centre of County Clare, and that is still today. And Ennis, if I'm not mistaken, hosted a FLA a couple of years ago, right? Oh, by God, it did. <laughs> What a week to remember. It was actually two years in a row. We did it in 2016 and 17. Um, I had just returned home from uh, Munich in Germany. That's where I started tour guiding, actually. Um, I returned home the Tuesday of the FLA. I went from Oktoberfest, basically, to, <laughs> to Irish Fest. Um, it was crazy. So for those that don't know, the FLA Kjolna Heron is a traditional Irish music festival held in a different town um, every second year. So each town gets two years of it. Um, unfortunately, this year is actually cancelled. I know. Um, sadly, but it'll be back bigger than ever next year. I can't wait. Um, but it, it is a week of madness. That's the only way I can describe it. Um, we actually wrote a blog about that last week. Um, a good friend of mine, his grandmother, I think she's from Delaware in the United States. He's a, 
and his grandmother is American. She came over to visit him, just happened to be the week of the flat. And he describes the week he spent uh, roaming around Ennis with his grandmother, who wasn't much of a drinker, but by the end, she had tasted her first pint of Guinness in Knox's pub. She was dancing around the streets. She was introducing Kieran to people rather than Kieran introducing uh, her to people. It's a very funny story. Um, I'll put the link, I'll send you the link later. And, you know, bringing, bringing the fly, I remember that when, when it was scheduled for Ennis, um, just bringing, bringing this festival of Irish music to a place that is so entrenched in the music and the tradition of Ireland. It just, it kind of made it a bigger, almost bigger than, than it had been anywhere else. It did. A lot of the people who uh, perform on the main stage at the flat every year, okay, they'd often have to travel because they're all, well, a lot of them are from Ennis, County Clare. So um, one of the bands, for example, is Socks in the Frying Pan. Are you familiar with them? Yeah, yeah. So um, they were playing in the main stage in Ennis, and and they talked about how they could puck a ball from their back garden right onto this stage, and how I was talking to um, Fika. He's actually a good friend of mine. He plays hurling with me, but he was saying how special it was to be able to perform on such a big stage in your hometown, um, bringing that type of an Irish traditional musical. A festival home to Ennis was just special beyond beyond words. So when people join you for a tour, Ollie, what I obviously they hear about Daniel O'Connell, um, but what else do you show them? I know that Ennis has quite a bit to to bring people in, but they may not realize it. So can you tell us just a couple of highlights? Absolutely. So um. The tour actually begins beside the, the side of the old court, as, as I mentioned. So you, you, a typical tour will start with the introduction of Daniel O'Connell. But there's so much more, Jodie. You, you know, we have uh, a peeping Tom here in Ennis. Have you ever heard of that? Oh, there's a man. Yeah, yeah. You know, peeping Tom, people often get afraid of this when I kind of there when I mention it. Um, but there was actually a man called Tom Steele in Ennis. And he fed and he fell head over heels in love with this uh, local brunette called Matilda Crow. And um, to cut a long story short, she lived in a house just across the river. I'll send you a picture now in a minute. Um, and he would sit on a rock opposite, the, uh, opposite our house, just across the river, and look through the window just to catch a glimpse of his one and only love, Miss Matilda Crow. Um, Eamon de Valera, another key figure in Irish history. Um, he first jumped into politics by winning one of, of by winning an important um, election in Ennis also. If you're spotting a trend, people tend to jump into politics by coming to Ennis. Don't know why, people just must love politics here. Um, and his presidential car is, is hidden away, and I'm talking about it is hidden away. It's not on any tourism map. It's It's tucked in behind the library in Ennis. Um, so if you come on my tour, you get special access. We get to go around and see that. Um, we also take a look at the Ennis Abbey, okay? Or the Friary, whichever you want to call it. Um, that's pretty much how the town started. Uh, the Friary was built in the 13th century, okay? A long time ago. And uh, the O'Brien family came into Ennis. They founded this place. And the town kind of grew from there. So that's one of the most historic uh, buildings in the town, and that's a big key attraction. And after my tour, many people like to go in and check that place out because it is steeped in history. It's absolutely beautiful. And as you uh, as you come into Ennis, you pass right by it, don't you? Well, I suppose it depends on how you come in. Yeah, well, one thing about the streets in Ennis is if you're driving, you know, don't stress, take a deep breath and just enjoy getting lost because it's gonna happen. Uh, the streets in Ennis are narrow, very narrow, okay? With cobblestones. Picture an Irish street and you, you've fairly got Ennis streets in one there. Um, believe it or not, those narrow streets, they used to be two way, not, not too long ago. Thank God they made them, they made them one way. Um, but if you ever do come to Ennis, and even if you don't wanna uh, stop, if you're in a rush or on the way to the Cliffs of Moor, yada, 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 I do recommend coming to Ennis, just do a drive through because you get to see some of the most amazing buildings, uh, the oldest pubs, 
you name it, we have it. It's pretty stunning. I, I have to admit, I've, I've tried to spend time in Ennis. Um, we stayed in Quinn at Napogue Castle for a few nights, and I needed to grocery shop. And Ennis is really the closest town to that, but oh my gosh, I was so lost. I just, I, I cannot get myself around Ennis very well at all. Yeah. Um, and, and parking is difficult. Parking is tough. Um, it, it is tough. Do you know why it's also narrow? Tell me. But it, it all kind of, it's based around the river. So the Irish word for Ennis is Inish. And if you directly translate that back to Ennis, or sorry, uh, back to English, it means, um, uh, it means island. Because traditionally the River Fergus would surround the whole town of Ennis, okay? So the town kind of started off without, a, without much of a plan. So the streets were just very narrow, they're very medieval style, okay? So people never really thought it was gonna become a big county capital of the town at all. So the streets are very narrow. Um, that's basically it. Many of the buildings have been knocked to knocked to um, over time to actually make space for parking. Uh, if you come on the tour, I can show you exactly where, but you'd be shocked how how little parking there used to be. But Ennis is a really great town if you are spending time in County Clare, but you want a more central location that's going to put you between the Cliffs of Moher and the Burren, and maybe. Um, Limerick City, Galway City, and Bunratty Castle. It's a great central location if you want to stay in one place and visit all of those locations, all those areas. Absolutely. Like, I think a lot of the people who come to Ennis they kind of use it as a hub town, okay? So it's 15 minute drive door to door from Shannon Airport to a hotel in Ennis, okay? Uh, if you're staying in, in one of the of the town centre hotels, like the Old Ground Hotel, like the Temple Gate Hotel, the Queen's Hotel, the Rowan Tree Hostel, they are all within walking distance, one two minutes of everything. Okay, um, there is a tour company um, that will collect you from any hotel and drive you to the Cliffs of Moher and bring you to the Aran Islands. The, uh, there is direct buses to uh, Galway. These places are all, by the way, within thirty minutes drive of your hotel front door. Um, Limerick also 20 minutes away. Galway, maybe 35 minutes. Like there's so much on your doorstep when you stay in Ennis. And I think it's worth it to stay there. Go off, enjoy your day, go to the Cliffs of Moher, go to Galway, come back, grab a pint and, enjoy, and just enjoy that music. There you go, that makes it a great hub town. So Ollie, I know that you have a virtual tour of Ennis on your website. Would you I like sure to do. tell people a little bit about how they can access that? Yeah, so um, when this lovely COVID-19 virus struck, um, tourism came to a standstill. But I wasn't going to give up there. I thought, you know, people still uh, deserve to see Ennis. A lot of my clients had to cancel or postpone, um, which, is never, which is never nice it happened to you. So I created a, a virtual tour for Ennis. Um, it's very similar to my normal walking tour. It's an interactive tour that can be done on any device, your iPhone, your iPad, your, your computer, anything you want. It's completely free. All you have to do is go on to ollistours.com um, and just type in your email address and we'll email, you, and we'll email the tour to you and you can experience it anytime on any device, simple as. And it will give you a great glimpse of Ennis and uh, it will make you want to visit and, and it does we've got that at the moment we've had a good few hundred people um, experience the virtual tour and that's the feedback you know <laughs> they're ready to come and see the real thing are there any other uh, accounts that people can connect with you on Ollie social media wise we're big on Instagram if you want some um, Irish entertainment we recommend you follow Ollie's tours on on Instagram. We also have Facebook. Um, there are two big ones. Um, tune in. There's a good few things to come. We're after, um, we're after opening up a new uh, merchandise store that's coming very shortly. It's called Two Thirds Irish. Um, yes, and um, yeah, stay tuned. There's a few exciting things coming down the pipeline. Excellent. 
Excellent. And um, for those of you, I know I kind of mentioned where Ennis is, but as we said, it's uh, 20 minutes from Shannon Airport. So if you land in Shannon, it's a great place to hub for the beginning of your trip. Or if you're flying out of Shannon, it's a great place to hub at the end of your trip. Very easy to access. So many of those amazing West Ireland attractions and sites from Ennis. So Ollie, thank you for joining thank you very me and giving us a little overview of Ennis. Gurav Bilamaga Jodi and lovely talking to you. Flawnagus Benacht.